So it's official, WWDC 2018 has come to a conclusion and as a result, we've got iOS 12 with speed improvements, many necessary changes that I think you guys will be very happy to learn about. So we've got the new version of macOS Mojave, watchOS 5 and the new tvOS. So in this video, let's do a quick recap of what's changed, what's new before of course getting to the actual hands-on demos. So I definitely wouldn't say this was one of the more eventful WWDCs. We had absolutely no hardware, but that was predicted by Mark Gurman that we wouldn't be seeing any this here. So they started off with a quick recap of the past versions of iOS, some of the big advancements, including the App Store, and of course reiterated that this upcoming update, iOS 12, will be a free update. And as predicted, all users currently running iOS 11 on their device will be getting an iOS 12 update. So I was super happy to hear about that. That means the iPhone 5S will be getting this update. And it definitely puts things into perspective when 81% of people are running iOS 11 and only 6% the newest version of Android at the moment. Apple's been supporting the iPhone 5S for six years now. That is absolutely ridiculous. So they kicked off the reveal of iOS 12 by talking about performance. That's going to be the major focus of this update as predicted. You're going to be able to launch apps faster, bring up the keyboard faster, enter the camera faster, and they've improved that in all areas, basically animations. So even the share sheet, even loading apps will load two times faster by working closely with the actual architecture of the CPU. They were able to get the load of the CPU to work almost at 100% right away instead of gradually rising up to it with time. So that change right there is going to make a big difference they say in the way that you use your device, how the animations work. So I'm so curious to see how that'll actually be in person. And they also introduced a new version of ARKit, ARKit 2.0. So using this, you'll actually be able to measure certain objects. You'll be able to demo things in real time from within Safari using a new format called USDZ. So this will be cross-platform within Safari. It's actually quite diverse what you can do with it, such as try products out and of course take pictures of them, see it in real time with AR. It was quite impressive to see that. So I see where Apple's going with all of this AR work. They also demoed multiplayer AR, which will now be possible, of course, with ARKit 2.0 using a Lego demo. Not that impressive, something I'd be interested in, but certainly some fun you can have with the right game, I think. They made some improvements to the Photos application. It's now smarter. It'll give you real-time suggestions within the Photos app. It's even smarter to actually detect certain types of scenes, areas, events. So Apple's definitely been working on the AI part of the Photos application. There's actually a new tab as well for you. So in there, you'll get some tailored results. Like a year ago, you know, you took this picture and the most impressive thing I think about the photos is sharing them with other people. You're going to be able to share in full resolution and it'll suggest which photos to share when you send it to them on the way back. It will suggest the other person some photos to send back to you from the same event. So kind of cool. Now Siri gets a rework as well in iOS 12. She's smarter now. You can actually get Siri shortcuts within certain applications. So third party support there. You'll actually be able to train Siri to bring certain things things up depending on a phrase, an event, a certain time, a place that you're at. It's kind of cool. Siri is definitely getting so much smarter in iOS 12. And Siri will have a new area in the spotlight search where she'll be able to give you suggestions depending on the area you're at. Again, contextual stuff, also timing, what you're usually doing at this time. So very cool that Apple is expanding in Siri shortcuts so much. I was very happy to hear about that. There will also be quite a diverse editor for Siri shortcuts as well. So you can optimize those. There's a whole list of options you can go through before she actually makes them a thing. Also within apps, there will be shortcuts for this. So you can directly add them within there, a phrase of your choosing. It's a very neat how structured this is. I mean, I was wondering how Apple would do it. And as usual, it turns out Apple really knows what they're doing and they take time to perfect these sort of things. So Siri is getting so much smarter. Next up, Apple has got to focus on new applications, bringing some unique ones to the iPad, such as the news app, the stocks app, and stocks is getting a redesign. So you'll actually be able to see the real time after after hour trading as well. And there will be news within the stocks application. So you can get direct news relating to the stock you're following. The voice memos is getting a redesign as well. Coming to the iPad, you're going to be able to record things a little bit easier now, more user friendly. iBooks is getting renamed to Apple Books. So as predicted, and CarPlay is now getting third party support for navigation apps. That doesn't mean more just navigation related, which I've heard most people just wanted ways anyways. Now, the biggest one I think you guys will be happy to hear about is the reworked notifications. 
Apple is bringing grouped notifications to iOS and making things a little bit easier with the do not disturb mode. So when you wake up, when you go to sleep, your phone will be so much simpler instead of having a barrage of messages that you're going to get more options to choose from with do not disturb up until a certain time and so on. For the new notification system, I think Apple certainly took some cues from Android as you'll be able to real time filter notifications by 3D touching on it. And you'll have some options to mute notifications uh, for that certain application. The grouped notifications look pretty cool, the stacked. So you certainly see how many there are behind it. There are more it makes things so much easier looking on the eyes anyways. And next up, Apple's bringing a new tool to iOS and that's app limits and screen time. So they want to make you aware of how often you're using your phone. And this is to tackle an issue where people don't even realize that they're spending this and this much time on their phone, even addiction possibly. So how often you're spending time within a certain app, you can set limits to remind you actually, if you're spending too much time in the app, how often you want to be reminded and so on. So very nice to have this tool. I think a lot of people are really going to be shocked how often they pick their phone up and respond to certain things every single day. And Apple did add that this is a very important tool for kids. So you can set allowances on certain apps, how often you want them to be used, how much time of a limit that you give on those apps. And it's basically a much smarter restrictions where you can control it from another phone. And of course, lots of improvements to messages, starting with improvements to the N emojis and that's tongue detection. So now you'll be able to animate your tongue and have that be detected by your face ID camera. Next up, there are several new N emojis, including the ghost, koala, tiger, and an all new T-Rex. And of course, I think this one's copying a little bit of Samsung, but done a little bit better, Memoji. So you'll be able to animate your own face, customize it in so many ways. There's actually a lot from wearables to, you know, your skin type to the type of beard you may have, type of hair. I think it was quite interesting, very, very detailed. And it seemed like Apple carved out a pretty big chunk of WWDC to talk about this. And I totally get why. I mean, a lot of younger users are using iPhones and uh, may want an iPhone 10 in the future. This is the perfect thing to entice them over with. So if you were coming from a Samsung device and you wanted this feature on iOS, it's very similar to Samsung's take on it. And uh, it's pretty cool though. I think I definitely like the iOS version a lot more. And something many of us thought would never see the light of day and that's FaceTime, major FaceTime improvements, including grouped FaceTime. And the way Apple did it actually is quite brilliant. The interface for it, I'm sure took them quite some time and some manpower to develop. So this one is actually a bunch of squares put together and whoever's talking, by the way, this is up to 32 people. That was the most impressive part. Whoever's talking is going to be brought up to, you know, the bigger square automatically. It's just going to grow in size and then shrink as the other person takes the stage. And it's really quite cool. Of course, the more people you have, the more messy the interface gets, but uh, you can click on an individual and have them just sit there while all other people talk in the background. So that's in a nutshell, iOS 12. Again, there's going to be a ton of smaller things here and there that Apple didn't mention at the event. They just don't have enough time. So we'll have to dig into that and see later today. So next up, they started to talk about watch OS and they had a couple major things that they wanted to focus on. And that's complications and sharing your activity with other people. So you can challenge each other to a seven day challenge and keep each other updated and so on. There's several new exercises, including yoga and hiking. And there's several changes to the outdoor run. So you have pace alerts now and cadence. So it'll show you your real time step count and so on. Also, I think this one was really nice is exercise alert. So if you started a certain type of exercise, it'll automatically detect it and then alert you and credit you for the time that you didn't start recording and automatically alert you to end it, of course. And there's also an updated Siri watch face that now detects even more things, as well as those Siri shortcuts. So they'll be present for you right there. Now, also, you don't have to say, hey, Siri anymore to your watch, just bring up the watch and then start talking to it automatically. Also within notifications on the watch, you'll be able to interact and if someone sends you a request for Apple Pay, you'll be able to pay them back directly from within the app. There's also a WebKit view for the Apple Watch. So within messages and mail, you'll be able to get a quick preview of the content in Safari tailored to the Apple Watch screen. I thought that was really neat. So in general, I think this is one of the biggest updates the Apple Watch has ever gotten. I'll definitely be covering it on this channel. So definitely a lot to cover on the Apple Watch end. There's also a new feature where students can actually put their student ID into the watch and certain universities will accept it as a real deal and it's going to be spreading to more in the future. And next up updates to the Apple TV. The most important stuff that Apple mentioned was that it's getting support for Dolby Atmos. So all you need is a Dolby Atmos compatible soundbar to enjoy that you're going to be getting some new aerial screensavers and one that's from the 
International Space Station, which was actually pretty neat. Third party remotes will now be able to control the Apple TV as well, and there will be many new services and channels. So next up is the next version of macOS, now called macOS Mojave, a very fitting name, and it's got a very beautiful theme. So Apple introduced dark mode with this version, and hopefully that's a hint that one day we'll be getting on iOS because Apple has not mentioned it at all. It is not coming to iOS this year, apparently, but it's beautiful. All of the new interfaces are suited for a dark mode. They're calling it dark mode, not a night mode or anything like that. It looks awesome. Better yet, the actual screensavers that they're including will actually be dynamic, so they'll change throughout the day to uh, go from daytime to nighttime, you know, depending on your theme. So I thought that was super neat. And Apple introduced a very nice feature called Stacks, where you can organize a messy desktop into piles. And this is depending on type, maybe the time it was taken or created, and I could see it being very useful in the future for messy people. And there's also a new view in the Finder called Gallery View. So you'll get a very big view of the certain content, PDF, you know, images, and there are quick shortcuts on the bottom right, where contextually, they'll give you options to do certain things. Say a picture is rotated the wrong way, it'll bring up a little option to rotate it the right way on the bottom right. And there's a nifty new screenshot tool where you can not only record photos, but also videos within a contained area, and then directly mark them up using a new markup tool, much like the iOS screenshot tool now on Mac OS. And I see a lot of potential for this one in the future. It's called continuity camera. So you can take a picture from your iPhone and directly import it into a certain area on the computer, say in a presentation, if you want to take a picture and directly insert it right away, you can do that. And I see Apple doing this in the future with other things as well, expanding that continuity to other areas. And this is where we get into the major point for macOS Mojave, and that's where it'll be getting ported iOS apps on macOS. This isn't coming anytime soon, but it is being done very well. In fact, the coding barely changes between iOS and macOS as it's using the very same framework. Apple's also taken some very intelligent steps to prevent your online fingerprint from being documented, making your fingerprint very similar to that of many other Mac users, so you can't be profiled and tracked online. There's also a new Mac app store as well, which looks very nice. It's got a new view, supports the dark mode, all around a very nice update. And Apple did make it very clear that they will not be merging iOS and macOS anytime soon, as the input sources are completely different. They're just made for completely different devices, one with a keyboard and a trackpad, the other with a touch screen. So I'm likely not gonna see a crossover anytime soon. Also, the apps that are coming right away are just these, the news, stocks, voice messages, and the home app, which are iOS ports coming to macOS. That's basically how they're experimenting with it. And then in 2019, you'll be able to get third-party apps from developers. So guys, that's it. iOS 12 and the rest of the betas will be available today to developers, otherwise fall for the full release. So stay tuned. I'm going to be covering all of this in the coming videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.